Asus has recently introduced a new BIOS feature on some lower end boards entitled Asus Performance Enhancement, or APE for short. Aside from Performance Enhancement maybe being a questionable name for your product that, that doesn't, well, it's a weird name for a motherboard is what we're getting at here. It's also caused some confusion and a bit of excitement in the community as to what it does because the expectation so far from what we've gathered online is that people think that APE will enable things like a 10400 non-K CPU to suddenly become significantly more competitive without a Z490 platform. So that's part of what we're looking at today. We're testing what APE is exactly, and more importantly, what it isn't. And to do that, we bought two boards. We bought the ASUS Prime B460 Plus and the ASUS Tough Gaming H470 Pro Wi-Fi for our guinea pigs, the latter of which has APE, the former of which does not advertise it. So this feature has been compared to ASRock's BFB, and or base frequency boost, which got initial waves of interest, but the two advertise mostly the same thing between them. It's an uplift in performance of non-K CPUs without using a Z490 motherboard and therefore dropping the price. So we can appreciate why the claims would be exciting, but we need to see if they do anything. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and our brand new Gamers Nexus wireframe mouse mat. Aside from being the best way to directly support our long form investigative reporting, you can also get a custom made high quality mouse mat made with a high detail 3D design that we created to show off heat sinks, coolers, video cards, and more. The mouse mat uses a stitched blue border for added longevity, a blue rubber underside for unique flair, and a microfiber cloth for smooth tracking. The mat is 36 inches by 12 inches and fits a keyboard and mouse easily. We sold out of the first run in 48 hours, but have more getting made right now. To backorder your mouse mat and ensure you get one in the next run, go to store.gamersnexus.net and backorder yours while reducing our reliance on advertisers, or click the link in the description below. So first of all, getting into this, the most commonly requested part to test with the APE or BFBE from our community has been the i5-10400. And that's because it has the potential to be competitive with AMD's similarly priced R5 CPUs and be a good gaming option. Unfortunately, as we found out in our testing for the review, at 3200, yeah, it's fine. But most people are pairing it with a non-Z motherboard, and so then with B or H, you're restricted in your memory support. And that's where the 10400 lost a lot of its argument to be a competitive option. So this is the one we're revisiting. Now, to kind of preface all of this, the 10900 is the CPU that really makes the most sense to use with APE or BFB the way it works, and we'll explain why as we get through this. But the 10900 non-K specifically is much more power constrained than the 10400 is on B and H platforms. And that's where you'd probably see a bit more of an exciting uplift. Either way though, the 104 is the one that everyone wants to be competitive and come to life to fight in the sub $200 market. So that's where we are. The way APE has been described to press, not us, we weren't able to get a, a direct answer on what it does in time for this content, but the way it was described to press previously as published online is that it's a toggle that increases the power limit for non-K CPUs on non-Z motherboards. So that'd be boards that don't allow standard multiplier overclocking as an example. The specific limit referenced is usually PL1 or power limit one, since this is the CPU's listed TDP and is the number that most people are familiar with. But APE also raises PL2. Check our past content for full explanations of PL1 and PL2, but the gist of it is that under sustained loads, Intel processors will run at a higher power limit, or PL2, and frequency for a brief period of time, known as tau, before settling down to a lower power level, like PL1, and lower frequency. APE, then, and BFB are not real overclocking. They're not technically, by Intel's definition, overclocking. And that's really the, the biggest division here. It's more similar to multi-core enhancement features on higher end motherboards where you're just tweaking power limits. So that means technically it's not violating warranties. Technically it's just exiting Intel's official guidance and that's really all it's doing. The key difference is that this is a locked platform and so it makes APE potentially much more interesting than MCE. Before we dig into the main subject of this piece, we should mention some other limitations. The boards we're discussing today can't overclock, not even with K-SKU CPUs. This is expected, but we just need to make sure everyone understands that. B clock is locked, so they can't be overclocked in that way either. They also can't run memory past the rated speeds for the installed processor, which, for example, is 2666 megahertz for the 10400 and 2933 for the 10700K, 10700, 10900 non-K at all. 
Loading XMP will set a memory speed up to the maximum supported speed, but no higher. The memory speed dropdown in BIOS can technically be set higher by the user, but the system won't boot, or if it does, it's because it reset that speed to something lower, like 2666. A lot of people have gotten confused about this as well, thinking that the 10400 can run at 2933 or 4000 on a B460 or H470 motherboards, but they can't. And we found out why people were confused about it, because you can set the higher number in BIOS, it's just that it won't properly apply and sometimes won't boot or if it does again, it resets. The two boards we're discussing today will not allow memory to run at 2933 with a 10400 installed. Full stop, that's it. Check Intel's ARC database for the maximum supported memory speed per CPU. You can go beyond that on Z490 platforms, but not here. That's why we tested the 10400 with standard 3200 memory on our Z490 platform to give us a like for like comparison with other CPUs, and then with 2666 memory in our pre B and H testing. We also did follow up content with about a dozen memory timings tuned for additional tests and frequency changes to elaborate on all of this. Both boards supported setting cache and CPU all core multipliers on the B416H470 chipsets to the maximum single core multiplier of the CPU. That'd be 53X for the 10900K, 51X for the 10700K, and 43X for the 10400. Neither board actually applied these settings. The 10900K ran at 43X cache and 49X core. The 10700K ran at 43X for both, and the 10400 ran at 40X for both. It was impossible to alter the multipliers per number of active cores. Max all core turbo on these boards really is the maximum. And even though you can set different things in BIOS, it doesn't mean that those things work once you actually validate the settings in the OS. We did performance testing with APE that we'll discuss in a little bit, but first we verified what APE actually does by toggling it on and making no other changes. BFB might be different, we're not sure, but they probably do roughly the same thing. With stock settings, Intel's XTU software reported PL2 as 134 watts and PL1 as 65 watts. With APE enabled, these limits were raised to 181 watts and 125 watts. No changes to tau, clock multipliers, or any other settings exposed to XTU were reported. This means that the 10400 will sustain all core turbo stock longer, potentially forever, and that's it. So far, APE is everything that it's claimed to be. So time to get into some benchmarks. With APE enabled, the 10400's short-term power draw was exactly the same as it was stock in our initial review, about 89 watts. This is power draw within the PL2 time limit, and so it makes sense that it would be unchanged. Stock PL2 for the 10400 is 134 watts, already well above the actual power draw, so raising PL2 to 181 watts makes no difference. APE only raises power limits, and if those limits aren't being hit, there's no effect. Blender shows the real signs of APE when tested for power. The 10400 was drawing 70.8 watts after five minutes rendering a Blender file in our original review as PL2 limit expired and the system attempted to pull itself down to 65 watts by lowering the clocks and the voltages. With the PL1 limit raised to 125 watts by APE, the 10400 was drawing 96 watts after five minutes and presumably maintaining the same all-core boost. We'll look at that in the next chart. This Blender frequency chart is intentionally zoomed to show the small frequency differences. The left axis is for all-core frequency averaged. The right axis is for zoomed base clock fluctuations at 90 to 100 megahertz. The reason we're always so cavalier about raising power limits by thousands of watts when overclocking is that CPUs are still limited by voltage and frequency settings. Nothing we did on either ASUS board could force the multipliers per active core to change meaning a maximum 40x multiplier for the 10400 under all core load and a maximum 43x multiplier with a single core active, in theory. Running a Blender AVX render for 20 minutes on the H470 board with power limits removed revealed that the 10400 didn't quite hold 4 gigahertz despite a steady 40x multiplier. As the B clock dropped below 100 megahertz, we see a bit of drooping in the frequency as well. Again, B clock control is forbidden on this platform. And these boards don't have any toggle for spread spectrum or other overclocking features that may help. As with the original testing for our review, the 10400 failed to boost to 4.3 gigahertz across any cores throughout the duration of the Cinebench R20 single core benchmark. It did boost to 4.3 gigahertz before the test began, but even the slightest workload is enough to knock it down from the peak boost clock to 42. APE didn't change this, and there's no real reason it would. 
Cinebench's R20 single threaded test doesn't trigger the PL2 limits, so there's really no change here. As the frequency charts have demonstrated, APE really only alters the CPU's behavior under heavy all core loads that outlast tau, and games are not that. We expect these results to match the 2666 CL15 results we gathered for the original 10400 review with some room for variance based on different auto cache ratios from a different motherboard, not to mention the known lower B clock frequency. We'll be sticking to 1080p results to maximize CPU bottlenecking and because we've tested the CPU to death already. We've, we've already done this at least a few times now, so we'll keep it simpler. After the games, we'll look at Blender and Chromium code compiles to see how a heavy all-core workload that maximizes the CPU core utilization behaves with APE. Before we get into these and the game tests, a quick reminder. We ran this set of tests originally to prove a point in now highly viewed content that the 10400 couldn't magically get good enough to compete just from heavy timings tuning if you're limited on these B series and H series platforms. We spent about three days on that content and included tunings down to 2666 CL10. 10, 10, 10, 22 timings. Really good stuff. And even that wasn't really enough to make waves with that $300 memory. We won't be going back over all that data again, but it will be present in these charts. If you have questions about it, including the 4000 megahertz clocks, please watch the 10400 tuning video. Also, we did those on a high-end Z490 platform, which makes it a lot easier. And possible for the frequency stuff. First up is Hitman 2, and the results are what we'd expect. The 10400 held 101.6 FPS average in the original testing with this memory at this speed in the Maximus 12 Extreme, the $750 motherboard we used, and the average in the H470 with APE enabled was 100.6 FPS for frame rate. That's less than 1% different, and also in the wrong direction. The difference is mostly noise, with some attributable to base clock and to likely different unsurfaced or tertiary timing changes from the motherboard change, but overall, it's really not that exciting. This game was much more responsive to memory tuning instead, up to 117 FPS average with some tight timings at the same frequency. For gaming, so far, you probably shouldn't be buying an APE or maybe a BFB, we have to look at it, motherboard just to try and get frame rate higher. F1 2019 is next. This is a game we can count on to be CPU bottlenecked and show a difference of a few FPS with the slightest changes in settings. But the APE enabled result beat the original by a whopping 0.6% here, which we can safely refer to as nothing. The lows were just as close. Tuning the memory from our earlier content piece had a much greater effect one pass with 2666 tuned for a CL10 averaged 242 FPS, 11.2% higher than the results with APE and no tuning. The real world impact in gaming isn't much or even there. We'll likely have to defer to Blender and code compile for more. GTA 5 is interesting because of how dependent it is on a single core or fewer cores at least. At 1080p, this one ran slightly higher than the original 10400's result with 2666 CL15 memory. But not by much. This is one of our most lightly threaded games we test, also still top 10 on Steam, and it's unlikely that it could ever fully load the 6-core 12-thread 10400, making APE especially ineffectual. Memory tuning was also less effective here than in some other game tests, but in a contest between less effective and not effective at all, there's a clear winner. Tomb Raider tends to take better advantage of high core count CPUs than some other games we test, so we had some tiny hope that it would load the 10400 fully enough to give APE a chance, but no. Other than a minor difference in 0.1% lows, the original result for the 10400 with 2666 CL15 and the new result with APE are functionally identical. The 10400 with AP enabled averaged 114 FPS in the Total War Three Kingdoms campaign benchmark, a number within margin of error or at least test variance of the original result with 2666 CL15 memory and with nearly identical 1% and 0.1% lows to match. It's hard work to achieve this kind of consistency when we spend months on fine tuning testing methodology. Even with all the hardware the same, it's really hard to get this level of the same result. Having scores this close with an entirely different motherboard is a good indicator that APE is doing absolutely nothing here. We should note that this benchmark testing lasts longer than the PL2 limit as well. So if the CPU were to step down to PL1 over the course of any of these game tests, it would be seen here. 
all core workloads are really what APE is probably meant for. So this should be where it shines, if anywhere. Using the 2066 CL15 memory, the 10400 originally rendered our Blender monkey head file in 22.7 minutes. Not really any different from the 3200 CL14 results since memory latency doesn't matter much here, but that's the result we got. With APE pushing up all core frequency, that time was reduced 6.6% to 21.2 minutes. Blender is about as much of a best case scenario as you could get for APE and to see if it actually matters. But it doesn't help the 10400 as much as real overclocking would were Intel to enable it anyway on the B and H platforms. The logo render originally took 29.4 minutes with this memory and APE cut that 9.2% down to 26.7 minutes. And also this is a fantastic representation of why with Blender you really need a couple of different scenes to fully get the scope of its performance since the percentages can change from one to the next. The Chromium build took 151.7 minutes to complete originally, cut down to 145.2 minutes with APE. Our initial review score of 146 minutes using our standard 3200 MHz kit of memory was nearly as good even without the power limits removed, but faster memory isn't really an option on these motherboards. Again, this is a long-term, heavily multi-threaded workload that benefits as much as possible from APE, so it's not really going to get better than this. The implication of APE for H470 and B460, and this is what got people excited about it, is that it does something you can't do otherwise. You can't do without APE or without BFB. And that's not really true. The understanding from early press reports from ASUS's marketing materials was that APE would allow you to raise power limits in a way that the boards wouldn't natively do. Well, the B460 that we bought from ASUS, that board, doesn't have APE, and we can modify all the power limits just fine, the same way as we can on H470, which does have APE. So between the two of them, the end result's the same, at least in our testing so far. Both boards have unlocked power limits that can be set manually higher than APE. You can set them to 4095 if you want to, watch that is. Uh, and then if you use APE, you have something like 181 watts, 125 watts, whatever it may be, depending on the CPU. But 4095 is possible for both PL1 and PL2. ICC and Tau can also be maxed out on these boards without APE on the B460 board. And so we're, we kind of struggled to find what it actually does. And in short, it seems like APE is just sort of a conservative way to raise power limits that you could already do manually. So maybe there's some merit in being an easy one button toggle since most people probably won't find or know that power limits are a thing you can change in BIOS. There might be some value there. It's just doing it for you. Kind of like MCE just does the same thing for you through a single button. But that's, it's kind of weird to market that as a complete standalone feature because you can already do it. So really it's not fair to say APE raises your performance by whatever percent ASUS said in their marketing materials. It's more fair to say APE is a single button that does the thing that raises your performance, except that thing is available on all the boards, at least from what we've seen so far. So it just, it seems like a couple lines below APE, for example. If you look at BIOS, drop down a few lines, under the APE toggle, there's a power saving and performance mode menu. And you can do all of this stuff there already. So setting this to max performance automatically maxes out the power limits. It makes APE redundant, even in terms of convenience, which was the only argument we were seeing up until that. This setting is a preset on the Prime B460 Plus, and even if it weren't, again, all the power limits are freely adjustable in other menus. Let's say for some reason you can't adjust it through BIOS menus. Well, you can use Intel's free XTU software and do it there. So here's the thing. Setting a limit that a CPU will never hit is pointless. The 10400 never broke 90 watts in our original benchmarking. And even with all the power limits removed, it reached a maximum of 96 watts, below the 125 limit that APE imposes on the H470 Pro. APE isn't meant for the 10400. It's designed for higher end locked CPUs like the 10900. But again, AP itself isn't really doing anything special. It's just a toggle. So. The 10900 has the same TDP 65 watts as the 10400, despite having four more cores and boosting significantly higher. We haven't tested the 10900 non-K, but we know from experience that its performance is going to be severely limited by 65 watt PL2. The 10900K's PL2 is 125 watts, 
And we've seen short-term power draw up to 200 watts. If you look at some of our, for example, our Cinebench power consumption chart from the 10900K review. Asus's boards allow removing these power limits, but that's not a great idea either. Some of these boards, keep in mind, are really true budget boards. So just be careful about what you're maxing the power limits out on, especially if it's a really low end or really cheap board, V460, H470 or otherwise, because the VRM might not be designed for something like a 10900 non-K or even or a K with the power limits completely maxed out. So just be careful of that. But overall, you Asus's reported sustained frequency for the 10900 loaded with Prime 95 on a board with an even higher 210 watt APE limit, still 100 megahertz below the maximum all core turbo. But uh, at the end of all this, APE will not overclock locked CPUs. And as a separate item, the 10400 in our testing so far can't do 2933 megahertz. So just because people saw that number applied to a 10900 or a 10700, it doesn't mean the 10400 can do it because Intel doesn't officially support it. Now, maybe there's a board that's figured out how to break that limitation. We haven't tested them all, but probably not going to be the case. And if it is, if there is a board that does 2933, cool. We have that data in the charts. It doesn't matter. It's still not great at 2933. So that's it for this one. Uh, BFB should be more or less the same type of thing. We'll look at it if there's significant interest, but there probably won't be because this piece already kind of, we'll see. We'll see how much people care about this one. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up something like one of our mouse mats or our mod mats, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We'll see you all next time.